Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to another video where we are building patches from scratch on the wonderful Arturia Mini Brute 2. So pretty much ever since I posted my first video on this, I've had people on the channel asking uh, whether I was going to do some videos sort of digging into the sequencer a bit more because the sequence on this thing is just, just fantastic. Uh, but I wanted to spend some time really, really learning it. I feel like I've got to know it a little bit better now and I'm ready to talk about it. And in this first video where we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the sequencer and quite a lot on the patch bay, we're going to do something quite special because we are going to build a true polyphonic patch. We're basically going to turn the Mini Brute into two completely separate monosynths that you can sequence and use completely independently. Let's check out how that's going to work. So on the way to our true polyphonic patch, we're going to make our way through a duophony, uh, a duophonic patch, uh, because that's kind of a good starting point on our way there. Uh, so it's maybe worth just quickly talking about what the difference between uh, a duophonic and polyphonic would be in this context. So duophonic would be where you have uh, two oscillators which can be tuned independently of one another. So we have our two VCOs here, but that then share the rest of the architecture. So what would happen is we have these two uh, oscillators which are going to be moving independently, but they're going to meet at the start of our filter and go through our VCA and output. So what that means is that you can have two notes playing, but they are being articulated uh, through a common path so you can't have um, one note being plucky and the other note being long because they are sharing the rest of the architecture but that's a good place for us to start so let's take a look at how we can do that so if we talk about how the synth is set up to begin with uh, if we have oscillator um, one and two turned up by default uh, the pitch will follow each other and you can actually kind of see this on the uh, patch bay here um, here on the pitch of VCO2 it says pitch 1. So it's basically saying that at the moment VCO1 and VCO2 are kind of coupled. You can tune them independently but they will move together. Um, so that's the first thing we need to do. We need to decouple those two things. Now to decouple that it's really really easy if I just stick a patch cable into the pitch 2 input of VCO2 you can hear now that uh, VCO2 is not moving with VCO1 anymore. So we've kind of got a duophonic synth now. It's just at the moment we have no control over uh, the second pitch. We want to give ourselves some control over that second pitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of one of the mod tracks here. So if we go through our four tracks here, track one is always doing pitch and track two is always doing gate. And those two are sort of coupled together. If I go into record mode and I put a step on pitch, there'll be one on at gate as well. Now by default, our two mod tracks here are recording the velocity and the pressure as we play, but that's not all they can do. They can do a bunch of different things and we can change their modes by holding down the, uh, the track and we can use the scroll wheel to pick something else. So I'm going to roll that back so that this um, track is also doing pitch. So that means now if we look on here on our, our knobs for um, mod one, we're getting pitches. Great, that's a good starting point and you will be unsurprised to know now that we are going to control the pitch of VCO2 with this mod track here. Now the first thing we want to do is get it so that these two um, tracks are going to be scaling together. So um, I'm going to go into our pitch track here, which is now only controlling VCO1, remember. I'm going to stick a step here. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to set it to uh, C3 uh, and I'm going to set the last step to just this step here. So this um, track is just going to go blah, 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 just play C over and over again. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on uh, the third track here, our mod one track, which is now controlling VCO1. I'm going to stick a note there, make sure it's playing C3, which it is. I'm going to set its last step here and now this is going to be cacophonous uh, and I'm going to set, um, I've got it already set on to all here uh, and I'm just going to make sure that the two oscillators are now tuned together. That's probably close enough. Um, so if we remove this uh, last step here and on this one as well, this now means that we can, um, so maybe if I just put um, So we've got um, that sequence there, but we can now put completely different 
pitches here. So uh, this one can go down to uh, that one there. Why did I have them? Uh, this one can be going down to A. I'm just trying to remember what I actually put in the other one. This one here can be going down to A. I'll do. And now we can hear we've got two uh, notes which are now moving independently, which is quite cool. However, if I change the filter here, it's changing the filter for both of them. So I can't have one bright and one dark. And more importantly, if I stick another note, say, here on... Can you hear how it's just barely coming through? The reason for that is that this note isn't triggering the gate in the same way that these notes are on this one, because as I said, the pitch and the gate are uh, coupled here. So that means that on this uh, note here, the uh, AD envelope is already pretty much closed because it's not firing out another gate. So we've got a duophonic situation here, but not a polyphonic situation. So we've decoupled our pitches of our two VCOs. Now I want to decouple oscillator two from the rest of the synth architecture. I want it to basically skip all of the rest of this stuff here, the filter and the VCA. That's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, so I'm gonna take the output of VCO2 and if I plug it into master there, you can hear that VCO2 is just ringing through and, and it's just <laughs> unplug that for a second. And indeed, now if I put another note in here, you'll hear that we do actually hear that note change. But of course, we don't want this oscillator just droning the whole time. Oh, uh, also note that I've turned down oscillator two now. We don't need to have this turned up to hear it because we are skipping literally everything. Plugging something into the master input literally puts it just before the master volume here. So I mean, we are skipping everything else. Now, the downside of that is that we don't have any control over its volume anymore. Just why I have to keep unplugging it. We want to have some control over its volume. What do we have in uh, our synth art architecture here which allows us to have control over volume or to put it another way amplitude we have our voltage controlled amplifier so rather than going straight into the master we're going to go via the vca and then we're going to take another patch out of the vca and into the master now that's still going to be ringing out the whole time at the moment and that's because we're not controlling the uh the cv of the vca so it's just fully open at the moment we've basically achieved nothing except for the fact that we now have CV control over this VCA. Now, what are we going to use to control the CV here? Now, we have two quite capable envelopes here. However, let's take um, our main sound on, on the pitch sequence here. We probably want to control its uh, filter cut off a little bit, so maybe something a bit plucky like this. That's great, except I've now used up both of our envelopes, so I can't use one of these envelopes to control the envelope for our VCA, because if I do that, we've lost our, our, our polyphony straight away. We've recoupled the, uh, the architecture in a way. Now, you might be thinking, well, there's our two envelopes. What else could we do? Could we hack the LFOs to kind of work it? Maybe not keen on that. Get this. One of the modes for our... Um, mod tracks is, if I just scroll through here, where is it? Env. This is incredible. Like, I can't get over how cool this is. What the Env track allows us to do is literally put an envelope, an AD envelope, so attack decay envelope, and sequence it. So we can sequence the attack, and we can sequence the decay of this envelope. That's mad. Just incredible. So um, I'm going to take the CV output of our uh, second mod track, pop it into the CV of our VCA, and I'm going to stick that into the master output. Now you can hear that we haven't got anything happening because um, the uh, track at the moment is set to zero. It's closed, essentially. 
So when you're trying to get this uh, sort of polyphony patch working, just a little caveat, as I said before, the pitch and gate here on our uh, pitch and gate tracks, they're coupled. If I put a step down on one, you get a step on the other. That's not the case for our mod tracks. So what we do have to go through and do, if we want to each of these steps to play a note essentially, perhaps we'll put another, another few minutes or something, is just go through and just copy across where we have those steps. So I'm just gonna copy that one, I've got two there, dunk, dunk, and I've got one there, dunk, like that. And now if I hit play, hear that we've got two separately articulated notes and we can start to sequence this envelope track so by default if I turn a knob here I'm changing the decay so if I want a long note here maybe one there as well and we can also um, do the uh, attack by holding down shift and turning the knob instead so say I want a bit of an onset here maybe longer that's cool. Maybe we have an attack there? Yeah. The other nice thing is that we don't have to have a note playing and we uh, on the pitch to put in other envelopes. So if we want to do like doubles, we don't have to put another one here. Two entirely separate. Two entirely separate tracks going on together that we have pretty much full control over. I say pretty much full control over because this is pretty good, but our first oscillator, which is going through the filter and stuff, we have control over its timbre, so we can do all this stuff. We can't, kind of can't currently do that with our VCO2 because it's skipping the rest of the architecture. So the question is, can we get some timbral change happening with this other um, voice as well? I reckon so. It's going to take a little bit of repatching and one sort of special gift, if you like. So one of the really cool things about the VCO1 section, or rather the VCO1 section here on the patch bay, is that uh, the metalizer on our triangle wave, which allows us to do um, stuff like like this. That's basically a wave folding uh, circuit. Um, the nice thing is that we can put anything into that because we actually have a metal in here. And if you put something into the metal in and then take the triangle out, you'll get wave folding applied to whatever came in here. So what that means is this. Rather than taking our output of our VCA, which is controlling VCA2 and putting it straight into master. Let's go via metal in, and then from the triangle out, which is now our output of the metalizer, rather than our triangle, we go into the master here instead. Um, we could do it the other way around instead, actually. Perhaps we should do it the other way around. We should, yes, let's, let's change that a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to change my mind in here and then go from the output of our VCO2 into the metal in and then from the output of our triangle, our metalizer into the VCA in there and come into the master there. The reason being that uh, the amplitude is going to affect how metalized things get. Um, I'm going to switch over to the sine wave for our second um, oscillator now because that's going to um, metalize better. So I'm going to turn down everything from um, the first VCO here and we can just hit that, hear that uh, beautiful sine wave, but if we, we now metalize it, we get all these cool sort of additive new harmonics. Super cool sounding. But I can't be sat here twiddling that knob constantly. Incidentally, I'm, do you know what? I'm just going to transpose that down an octave as well I think it's going to sound better. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, I can't be sat here twiddling this knob. I want to be able to control it. And that's what the metal mod 
input is for. Now, even with our, um, our envelope tracks, we've now run out of envelopes. So we could have this being done by the um, by an LFO and have it sweeping. I kind of want it to work with the envelope. I kind of want it to um, almost be like a, a West Coast synthesizer where you've got that wave folding thing that's been controlled by an envelope. It's a really cool sound. So let's try and emulate it. Now, what I really want to be able to do here is take the um, output of our envelope and send it both to the CV and to the metal mod input here. We can't do that because uh, we don't have a, um, a malt essentially on this patch bay. But um, as recommended to me by DivKid, I have picked up some stack cables uh, from TipTop. What these allow you to do is patch something in, but also tap that patch to go somewhere else as well. Neat. So I'm going to unplug my CV control there, so it's going to start ringing out. And I'm going to repatch it with my stack cable here. So this is now working exactly as it was before. Perfect. And then I'm going to take the top of the stack cable, so I'm copying that signal, and I'm going to stick it into the metal mod input here, which now means that if I turn up the metal mod, oh, I haven't actually patched it in. There we go. There it is. Embarrassing. There we go. <laughs> I was wondering why that wasn't working. You now hear that we're getting that timbral change along with uh, our volume envelope happening. That's really, really cool. It's kind of like working backwards with a filter. This is additive rather than subtractive. It's got a really cool sort of metal, as, as the title would suggest. Great with plucky sounds. Let's bring that other VCA in. Two entirely separate um, sequences. Let's see if we can drop the the octave again. Really, really cool. The cool thing here is that we can now change the uh, last step of one of the sequences to get them rolling over each other because they're working entirely independently. So far. So we'll come in here and we'll uh, do some repeats. That's we'll slow down this one to half speed. Loads of fun. So what we've got here now is rather than having um, a mono synth, we've got kind of two mono synths. And it's all possible because these mod tracks can fire out their own uh, sequenceable envelopes. I can't overemphasize how mad that is. Just so much fun. Let's add some reverb. sit and mess with this. This just needs a kick down, all right? Amazing. 
Ah, where's, 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 where's the drum machine where I need it? Anyway. That's, uh, that's enough of that. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and that it might have opened your eyes to some of the power that the mod tracks on the sequencer have. Uh, I'm going to do um, at least another two videos that I have planned digging into some more of the uh, alternate modes on the mod tracks because I, I really think that the sequencer on this synth is incredibly generous and incredibly powerful. You know, if they released, and Artoria, please do release a BeatStep Pro 2 that has some of these alternate modes, has the ratcheting, man, I, yeah, it would be an instant buy for me and I suspect for a lot of people out there, especially people with uh, modular setups because some of the stuff, uh, being able to sequence uh, envelopes, uh, just really, really powerful, really, really interesting. So if you enjoyed that, if you found it interesting, please do hit the thumbs up button. Uh, it does help me out. Make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in seeing some more stuff like this, because um, as I say, I've got a bunch more videos planned uh, to talk about some of the more interesting features on the Mini Brute 2S. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. See you soon.